Excellency Ferdinand Leinstein, the Ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to the State of Qatar, and Mr. Jaron Nayland, uh, the Chairman of the Dutch Business Council in Qatar. Delighted to have you both joining this conversation with the Peninsula. To begin with, let's focus on what's new for both the countries. I mean, on one hand, we have sturdy trade ties and investments flowing in. And on the other, there are sustainable development strategies and emerging technologies. Ambassador Leinstein, how would you remark on this? Do you see a potential growth in business bilateral ties between the two nations? Okay, Joel, thank you for uh, uh, giving us this opportunity. Um, the, uh, the relationship with Qatar and, uh, and the Netherlands are uh, extremely good. And uh, I think it started a long time ago when Shell was arriving here in, uh, in Qatar. Uh, and from there, you see that there's a large development uh, into a lot of sectors. So we have been into agriculture, um, water sector, uh, energy sector. Uh, and lately, I think we're driving now more into the digitalization and technological uh, sectors. Uh, I think there's a huge potential. If you look to the Netherlands, uh, we are the fifth country on the innovation index. We are the seventh country on the competitiveness uh, index. And I think there's a lot of opportunity to work closely with, uh, with Qatar. Qatar has recently done uh, an investment in uh, the port of Rotterdam, in the Kramer Group, by Q Terminals. It also uh, shows that there is a growing interest from the Qatari side of investing in the Netherlands. So also the investment program is uh, one of the objectives I'm here for in Qatar, to attract foreign direct investment from Qatar to the Netherlands. And I think we have, especially on the digitalization agenda of, uh, of Qatar, a lot to offer in, uh, in terms of uh, the infrastructure we have, the digital infrastructure, ASML is the leading company in the world on the producing uh, machines to produce ships. And around ASML, there's a whole ecosystem uh, which is uh, uh, connected with this uh, uh, high-performing uh, technology. Thank you for having me uh, in your interview. Um, yes, there are a lot of promising sectors. Um, uh, His Excellency already pointed out to logistics uh, and sustainability. Um, and I think uh, these are also opportunities which are not one-off opportunities, but will continue to be uh, presenting themselves. As the Dutch has set very um, high ambitions as to the sustainability and the use of renewable energy. And this requires a lot of investments, not just now, but also in the future. But I'd say in addition, there are a number of sectors, uh, the strategic key clusters in the Netherlands, they are referred to as so-called top sectors. Uh, where the Dutch government is actively promoting investments. So just to name a few, in addition to um, logistics and sustainability, there is IT and tech, um, agro-food, um, transport. These are all very important clusters, and uh, there are many investment opportunities also for Qatari partners. Well, we are very grateful to have a, a very close partnership with the embassy here. Um, His Excellency is an honorary member of our business council. Vice versa, we are always invited when um, the embassy is organizing periodic breakfast meetings with the members of the Dutch Business Council and the staff of the embassy where we can update each other on, on uh, developments. And also with incoming missions and outbound missions, we help each other with expertise and referrals. So to your question, yes, uh, this is something we work on together. Yes, we uh, have done some cultural changes in, in the past, especially on the museum. Uh, we have a famous uh, Dutch architect, Rem Koolhaas, who has been building the National Library here in, uh, in Qatar. Uh, on the fashion side, there has been uh, exchange of Dutch designers coming here in, uh, in Qatar, uh, working, for instance, in M7 or in uh, Italy One. Um, and we're currently working on a, uh, a Dutch graphic artist to make a beautiful uh, graffiti uh, picture of the uh, lady with the pearl uh, in her from uh, the famous Dutch uh, artist uh, Vermeer from the 17th century. Um, so those are kind of examples of uh, broadening the uh, cultural exchanges uh, with, uh, with, with Qatar. Yeah, more in general, I would like to say that if you look to the map of Europe, uh, the Netherlands is uh, well located. So we are in the middle of Europe and a gateway to Europe. 
we close to, uh, Germany is our largest neighbor, we're close to France um, and we are close to uh, the UK. So the, the three main economies of, uh, of Europe are directly uh, connected to, uh, to the Netherlands. Uh, Amsterdam is a great hub to, uh, to travel from within Europe. Uh, we are famous for tulips, uh, windmills, um, green pastries. Um, so I think um, there's a lot of lot to see in the Netherlands. But I think the biggest asset of the Netherlands is that it's a one-hour flight to London. It's a one-hour drive to Brussels. It's a five-hour drive to, to Paris. So from the Netherlands, you can explore the whole of Europe. And uh, I think that will be a great starting destination and final destination for Qataris to visit uh, Europe and the Netherlands. Yeah, well, <coughs> I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a frequent interaction with the embassy. Um, so for incoming missions from the Netherlands, that could be also visits of members of the Dutch cabinet, as well as business delegations coming in from the Netherlands. But also the other way around, we uh, liaise with each other we discuss topics, we use each other's networks and referrals to uh, help ensure that these are uh, fruitful visits. The uh, developments has already um, strengthened. Uh, I uh, assume and expect that this will grow in the future as well. Um, the reasons uh, for this is first of all that this is a region in the world with a very robust uh, growth. So the growth perspectives are very solid and the Dutch companies uh, I would even say by tradition are very internationally oriented so they are always looking for growth opportunities uh, in the rest of the world. So uh, on top of these robust growth perspectives I'd like to point out to the sectors in the National Development Strategy which is published recently where the Qatari government wants to strengthen specific sectors here and these sectors uh, really match very closely with the top sectors uh, of uh, the Dutch economy, strong clusters where you have internationally oriented companies who can bring just investments but also uh, technology and expertise which can be used to strengthen these clusters here. So yes, for these two reasons I believe that this will continue to grow. Yeah, well let me first of all uh, applaud the Qatari government uh, in, the, uh, in the role they play now in, uh, in, in the conflict, the mediation role and, and, and try to bring this conflict to an end and uh, um, to bring peace to, to, to Gaza. I think that's, uh, it's a, a very, very important role they are playing and uh, we applaud them also for, for this. And uh, my Prime Minister, but also my Minister of Foreign Affairs are in close contact with uh, His Highness the Emir, but also with the, uh, the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs and the Prime Minister here in, in Qatar. Uh, and they also uh, convey messages on behalf of the Qatari government to, uh, to the Israeli side to uh, push uh, them also to uh, come into a uh, ceasefire agreement. Um, from the policy perspective, the Netherlands has always been a great supporter of the Palestinian two-state solution, uh, including Gaza, West Bank and East Jerusalem. And uh, we also seeing that the, 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 set, the settlers in, in, in the West Bank area are blocking also a sustainable solution for peace in, in Gaza. So I think we also think it's important that this has to be solved to bring a sustainable solution into, uh, into Gaza and to Palestine. Uh, about uh, UNRWA, um, as you said, uh, we are uh, now in the stage that we'll continue to support UNRWA. We always have been a great supporter of UNRWA. Um, our contribution has already been paid in December last year, so in that sense there is not, uh, from a financial, financial perspective, a kind of stop of uh, contributions to UNRWA. But I'm happy that now the uh, report of uh, the uh, independent investigator has been on the table, and so that also makes us first possible to continue financing UNRWA because we be also believe that UNRWA is the only viable party who can deliver aid on the ground in, uh, in, uh, in Gaza. So and, uh, especially in the state where you are now in with uh, today almost more than 35,000 people being killed of whom 70% uh, women and, and children. I think that's of absolute importance that uh, aid is flowing in and 
things are stopping now. We had uh, our special envoy for uh, humanitarian affairs for Gaza. She has been here. She has been doing a round also to connect with uh, Qatari officials. Uh, we have done some uh, humanitarian aid droppings from the air in uh, 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 last month. We're supporting uh, the UN system through OCHA with, uh, with funding to bring uh, aid to, uh, to Gaza. Uh, and are, we are in close contact with uh, uh, the department of uh, Her Excellency al um, to uh, make sure that we can deliver aid uh, through different channels. His Excellency Ambassador Kotel Langston and Mr. John Nyland, thank you for your time with the Peninsula. Thank you. Most welcome. Thank you.